There are human habitations on this Earth so remote, or the land surrounding their inhabitation so inhospitable to other human life, that these clusters of human beings remained untouched by the modern mainstream developing civilization until much later than any other on Earth. The result of this being the discovery of ancient cultures, some as if unfrozen from the Stone Age, untainted by outside influences and incubated and developed by these isolated locations over untold millennia. If we look at the remote rainforests of northern Peru or Papua New Guinea, etc., many myths exist. Although many vicious acts are undertaken in defense by these people, the images of the plane, for example, which supposedly flew too low over an uncontacted tribe, supposedly peppered with spears, although later debunked, was born from this man-eating kernel of truth, that within these forest regions, head-hunting and the cannibalism of their enemies was a practice undertaken by a vast number of opposing tribes, still undertaken, we believe, in some of the remotest locations on Earth. Among these gruesome tales was the long-told tale of the practice of the shrunken head. With some lucky souls able to either smuggle out or simply leave with these unfortunate victims' shrunken heads, yet nearly always touring them within curiosity exhibitions for money, thus their authenticity strongly argued for decades. This continuing until a true account and possible recording of the shrinking of a human head was recorded. The Encyclopedia of Britannica, quote, In Melanesia, the head was often mummified and sometimes worn as a mask in order that the wearer might acquire the soul of the dead man. Similarly, it was reported that Aboriginal Australians believed that the spirit of the slain enemy entered the slayer. In New Zealand, the heads of enemies were dried and preserved so that tattoo marks and the facial features were recognizable. This practice led to a development of head hunting when tattooed heads became desirable curios and the demand in Europe for Maori trophies caused pickled heads to become a regular article of ship's manifests. In South America, the heads were often preserved, as by the Hivero, by removing the skull and packing the skin with hot sand, thus shrinking it to the size of a head of a small monkey but preserving the features intact. There, again, headhunting was probably associated with cannibalism in a ceremonial form. Despite the prohibition of headhunting activities, scattered reports of such practices continued well into the mid-20th century." End quote. Thus confirming the myth and advances in forensic abilities, managing to confirm many in collections as authentic. The Hivaro tribe lived on the eastern slopes of the Andes in Ecuador and Peru, north of the Marignan River. Britannica continued, quote, The Hivaro were well known and are still proud of their past technique of shrinking human head to the size of an orange. End quote. Although gruesome, we find the practice of shrinking and the shrunken head itself an incredible macabre curiosity, and of course, highly compelling. <laughs>